Hello, this is CJ Blink120, and today what we're going to be focusing on is the concept of what is OpenSim. Now, if you've watched some of the other videos in this series, you have probably already have a pretty good idea of how to set OpenSim up, both on the client side and the server side. What we're going to be focusing on from now on, though, is going to require that we have a better understanding of what exactly goes into the guts of the OpenSim engine. So we're going to be looking at that during this video. So without further ado, let's start talking about the basics of OpenSim. So the first thing we're going to start with is the fact that OpenSim is a client and server platform. So what does that mean? That means one of our computers on our network is a server and the other is a client. Now what does that mean? Well the server is the thing that hosts the server, the actual server program. It's serving up the data and it's working so that the it's the back end of the whole programs and it's working so that the client can exchange data with the server and display that data in a meaningful fashion that's the whole idea of the server client paradigm so let's look and see a few things that the server can do so a server obviously can run our open simulator dot exe now open simulator dot exe is the program that actually runs and deals with all of the back end um, some other things that we're going to be looking at setting up are Apache, which is for web server. So whenever you go to Google, they're running a web server. Whenever you go to Amazon, they're running a web server. We're going to do the same thing, except we're not going to be sell selling anything or providing uh, search results. What we're going to be doing is providing information about our OpenSim server. So we're going to say Apache runs our web server. Um, there's another server, another kind of program um, that runs on our server, which is called PHP. And PHP isn't so much a server in itself, but rather a server-side application. What do I mean by that? Well, PHP, what it does is it processes PHP data when a page is called. So sometimes you'll look up in the ad address bar of your internet browser, whether that's Firefox, Chrome, or the dreaded Internet Explorer. And what you'll see is something at the very end called .html or .php. Now if it says .php, that means some post-processing or pre-processing is being done on the server side before you see that image uh, or before you see that web page on the screen. A good example of this is when you log into websites with the username and password. PHP has to do some checking to say, okay, does this account actually exist or are you trying to be an imposter? But PHP can't remember all of your login information and everything. That would be too much for PHP to handle. So what we use is something called a database. And there are several different databases out there. But a database is basically a table, like an Excel table, that will store all of your information for you so that you don't always have to store all of that information live in your programming language. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a database called MySQL. And MySQL is our database. And PHP, let's label this here, PHP is going to be our um, pre-processing. So if you look, you'll see we've got Apache, PHP, and MySQL. Now Apache, PHP, and MySQL all run on the server side. And the way you can get all of these features is by downloading something called WAMP Server, which stands for Windows, Apache, PHP, and MySQL. So let's go ahead and take a look at WAMP. Go ahead and Google WAMP and click on the first result. And it takes you to WAMPServer.com. Now on WAMPServer.com, it shows you a little bit about what WAMP server is. We are just going to go ahead and click on the downloads, and you can try to figure out which is the best for your computer, WAMP server 32-bit or 64-bit. Both of them have PHP 5.5, and they are at version 2.5 currently. At this point, you should probably have a pretty good understanding of whether your computer is 32-bit or 64-bit. If you don't, please Google that or look up another YouTube video. It's very, very easy to understand how to do that. So once you download WAMP Server, you've got Apache, PHP, and MySQL running on Windows, in addition to your Open Simulator server. Now what happens on the client? 
Well, if you remember in our very first Open Simulator video, we don't actually run Open Simulator itself on our client. What we do is we run a client program that helps connect us with the Open Simulator server. That's called Imprudence. Imprudence Viewer. There are other viewers such as Phoenix or Firestorm or even Kokua. And if you Google Open Sim Viewers, you will find a plethora of Open Sim Viewers that are being developed open source. Um, Imprudence is probably the best if you're trying to get into open source viewer programming. Um, of course, Open Simulator itself is open source. So you can download all of those files from opensimulator.org. So all of these things, um, in addition to whatever programs you have on your own computer, all of those things, um, are what run on the client and the client connects to the server and the server talks back to the client that is the basis of how client server communication works so our server is going to be talking to the client and our client is going to be talking back to the server Now, another important th thing to understand is the whole scope of the server client system. Are we running the server and client on the same machine? If the answer is yes, then what we have is a localhost setup. So what I'm going to do to show that is encapsulate both the server and the client in one larger block. And we're going to call that larger block localhost. Now some of you who've are familiar with setting up other servers probably have a good idea of what localhost means. If this is the first time you're hearing about localhost, I'll give you an introduction. Basically, every computer has a network card, and in that network card, there is something called a loopback address, and it's the same for every single network card. It's a convention, the standard convention that we use. And the network card IP address for for looping back to itself, we call it the loopback address, is called 127.0.0.1. That is, if I get my numlock on, 127.0.0.1. And if you put this into your client, while we're running the open simulator on the server, you'll be able to connect back and forth. It starts to get a little bit trickier when we're running the server and client in different scopes. What I mean by that is on different machines or on completely different networks. At this point, we're just about out of time for this video. So what I'm going to do is continue this explanation on what is OpenSim by introducing some other things about scopes in the next tutorial. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And if you would, um, if you could spare $1, that's going to help me continue to produce great videos for the OpenSim community. Thanks for watching.